In this video, we will look at two examples to help us practice drawing truth tables, which remember are just a way to organize possible truth values in a table format when you have sometimes pretty complicated situations with P's and Q's. So when you're doing a truth table, the first thing you want to do is figure out how many columns that you're going to need. In this case, we're drawing a truth table for P, Q, and P and Q. So our ultimate end is going to be P and Q. And before we get there, we're going to have to have P individually and Q individually. So altogether, you need three columns. Now we're working with two variables, so the first thing you need to do is figure out all the possible combinations of truths for P and Q, for two variables. So they could both be true. You could have also one be true and one be false. And there's two ways for that to happen because either one could be true. And finally, it could also be that they're both false. So for two variables, there's four possible truth combinations to start. Once you've done that, you want to analyze P and Q. So for P and Q to be true, remember that's the symbol for and, both P and Q have to be true. Okay? So if P is Q and true is if P is true and Q is false, then P and Q will be false. So they both have to be true for P and Q to be true. So the only time where both of them are true is the first one. So in that case, P and Q will be true, but in the rest of them, P and Q would be false. So that's a truth table for P, Q, and P and Q. All right, second example, draw a truth table for P, Q, and P or Q. So the same thing, except this time we're doing or instead of and. So again, we're going to have three columns for P and Q each by themselves, and then P or Q. So again, once we've realized that we're working with two variables, the first thing you're going to do is fill in all the possible truths for P and Q for two variables, and there should be four. If there were three variables, there should be eight. If there are four variables, there's 16. They're actually always powers of two, the number of possible combinations. So for two possible variables, they could both be true. You could have one be true and one be false, or the other one be false and the other one be true, or they could both be false. Those are the four possible combinations. Now with this symbol, this is the symbol for or, and for P or Q to be true, it just means that at least one of them has to be true, but not necessarily both. So P or Q, you should look through and notice in almost all of these, one of them is true. There's only one case where neither of them are true, which is right here. So that's the only case where our answer will be false. But for all of these, we're going to just have true, true, true. Okay? So P or Q is true most of the time, unless the original two statements, both of them were false. 